So let's make a new video guys. So it's kind of weird where if I tattoo I get pretty much requested one and the same thing all the time. And it's kind of weird that on YouTube I have mostly one and the same questions asked to me to draw animals and animals and animals and animals. And so I'm going to draw an animal just for you guys to see how to draw an animal. And, and neither, needless to say it's pretty much as you draw everything else. You start with a baseline and then you add little details and then you just carry on like there's not much difference between drawing something else and an animal where you may, maybe there's a little bit of like texture in that but you just do little texture so here we go let's draw an animal and let me show you what i got so as you draw anything else in the world you literally i'll make a new layer and i'm just going to explain you what i see when i look in the image so i got a new layer which would be like a clean white paper, which I'm going to do a paper underneath. So you you can't say you make your life easier. I'll make it harder. It'll be on a paper. So what the things what I see, let's say big lines. So approximately from here, let's make it bigger from here. So about here to about here to about here. And that looks kind of square to me. Then from here to here to here, it's quite, a, quite an easy shape, isn't it? Approximately middle, you pull it down, you pull it down, quite easy in it. And this square would be a little bit tilted in, and you kind of see where the eyes are. It sits on approximately on the same level there, you just uh, level it a little bit lower, and you get your eyes. Middle, kind of still stays in the middle, it's a little bit curved there, but it's nothing hard to curve a little bit in it. And then it's, it's pretty much straight there. Maybe a third from the end, you start to draw the ear. It's it's literally like as you would draw something else. Like if this would be maybe a middle, approximately, that's where that little thingy starts. And that's where that kind of starts. So middle upwards, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's nothing really that hard. And then let's say this end where that circle is, so the middle, you can approximately get that. And then if you divide this into, let's say half, then we get another half, half of the halves, and you have this line there. Now you know where this sits, you can curve that slowly, and that approximately turns into a circle, and I bet that turns yeah. into a circle. See what I mean? It's it's extremely easy if you divide into big shapes and you don't have to start with the line where here and then you struggle to find where that is. And even if you look on like the similarities between that and that, it's not far off where that eye goes in. Same you will kinda of expect that to happen. It's I don't know. Maybe it's just me who thinks it's easy, but I, I literally can't see anything hard. And only once you've got like all the main lines sketched out, then you start to do the next big thing. Let's say the big one here, that would be the biggest one. Then you approximately sketch that, then you kind of sketch that and you leave it. That's your map. You don't do anything crazy there yet. And then you do it here and you literally get the next big thing out of the way after the big lines and then you can start to like make little suggestions there will be that and then you go there and then then you know what I mean like you, you can start to like map it out the next level of the detail you don't go crazy into like doing all these little ones there and maybe perhaps a bit here like that's unnecessary at that stage you do like you're probably going to have this kind of mapped out-ish. Then you can clean that up a little bit, curve that a little bit. Then like the next big one would be like, let's mark this one here. That's that. And you don't touch it. You just, just sketch it. Leave it there. You don't have to go in like crazy already into little fine line details there. No need for that at that moment. You need big, bigger elements. You're probably going to have that there. And now, as we discussed, that area kind of starts there. You curve that a little bit. 
that adds there, that adds there, that goes up to here. And, and you plan this kind of level of detail out. You're gonna see, I'm gonna literally gonna sketch all that on a paper and I already have an idea what we're gonna put underneath the tongue and what might our teacher, for example, teach. Let's say you have sketched the face in rough sketch and you, you try to find out how big is the distance between where the tongue starts and finishes. So literally you put a thumbnail where that line is, you close one eye and you, you put the end of the pencil or pen, whatever you use in there. And you will go like, oh, it's approximately there. And then you try to find similarities. What is that kind of similarity? Well, I can see now is where this darkness starts and this here starts, it's approximately there. So imagine if the tongue wouldn't be there I can see that that is the distance I need to go downwards. So I go down, there's approximately the middle and boom, it gives me that. That look goes a little bit that way, that goes a little bit that way. And to curve that in, it's not that hard, isn't it? And that's it, and you got the basic shape afterwards when you can like get that line in and there and you can start to play with all this. Once you know approximately where that sits, it's quite easy to detail it again more and more and more. And that's about it. Like it's it's as you would draw any other stuff. You just find the, the big lines, the big areas, and then you narrow down, then you curve, then you add little details, and before you know it, it's all done. Even if you start with like block of there, let's like say that's like the square, you want to find what's the end here. And if you do this, let's say you start from there because that's your known. So from there to there is there to there, approximately there. So you add a fraction more and then you will know where your end line is. And once you know your end line, there's approximately your middle, then even if you there's end, there's end, let's say approximately there's a middle. Because you don't know the width that way yet. Let's say the black one is what we have. If you check, let's say, check from this black line here to black line there, just to see like what's the measurement. Say we are here approximately. And if you put that sideways, guess what? that same distance. Now you know that there is your end and you can approximately guess the whip there. If you go down, that just turns into like a little curve and same you do here. You think how much is that to versus that. So you go down to about there, flip it sideways. That would go a little bit over there. You just cut it down right there before and again, you, you go up there, that's there, same here, curves that way and curves approximately there. And later on, you can draw, just add stuff to it a little bit. And that's how you just build it up and then you add more and add more and add more. Like that was middle, so approximately there was the middle, there was a little curvature, but you can play with it. That approximately probably went there, that's there. And before you know it, you get sketch ready. And then the next level of detail would be like approximately find where the big guys sit, the big black spots. Maybe you know some familiar one, maybe there was one here which you can find dead easy matching that line to there. And based on that, you can find the next one and, and so on and so on and it takes time. It's not that simple, not that easy, not that fast, but it does take time. So let's do that on a paper. Let me demonstrate to you how I would do the same thing on that. What I have here is technical pen. So I do a few clicks and it comes out clean and crisp because it saved me time to sharpen the pencils. So 
if you wonder why it was 0 0.5 technical pen and i'm pretty sure it's hb inside or maybe h4 because h4 is my favorite i can't remember what i bought but it must, must be one of them so keep in mind this is a3 so what i want to do is put that in into the upper section there and i have a different element what i want to put it here so i need to split this on half so mark myself i know this is the, the side what i need to leave for the extra part which is in plan which i'm not going to show you yet so we need to keep in mind we're going to draw only from here upwards and because i did these measurements with you just now i kind of have approximate idea what are the measurements so I, I know like that to that is half and that to that it's half and it makes life easier so it's pretty much as you draw anything else in the world so let's start so we're gonna start the journey from the middle line into the bigger shapes which is the square from that square distance and the measurements we know the bottom one and then we split down in half and because we already did that on ipad i had really approximate idea how big and how wide we need to go where what sits so it was that easy to just crack on because we did already like the reference, the preparation for this needed. And at this stage, really to keep it that simple, that clean, just the main lines, the outer lines, and keeping in mind half of that, you may be going to rub it off. Maybe you're going to like draw stuff on it, on top of it. Maybe you have a split second decision where you're going to create a totally different design and as you can see because of the measurements i already knew where that sits and at this stage you just scratch barely something in as long as you have the main design proportionally correct which means afterwards you don't need to wipe off the whole design or half design because you did this here too low and based on that measurement you did something else really bad and at this stage it's barely barely just scratch in, scratch in, and in a second, I'm gonna show you what's gonna be the next element, what we're gonna put underneath the tongue. And this is gonna be our next subject, what we're gonna draw underneath it. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We split that on half, half. Then we approximately decide what's gonna be the measurement here. Same, we're gonna copy there. Then as you can see that line there, matches line there. So approximately know where the half is, we do the half there, then we'll see what line matches there, there's this one. And based on the width here, we can see how much does that goes into the length of the face. So it's 170%. Yep, that was Apple Pencil, who fall. Then we do there, and based on the, the distance of the head, we go from one measurement and then we approximately need to find where this line is. And we're gonna re, uh, basically take that, see how many heads fit in there, probably two and a 70% again. Then we know where this is. Then we can link that to that approximately. And then we can kind of see where this goes and basically in the same order and only later on we go and sketch into these all little small details but that's later on same as i did with the leopard where it only gets a certain point and then we carry on sketching the next one then i have a few plans what i'm going to do with this one and this one together and once i plan all the togetherness you're going to see later on adding more details on this guy only then I know which areas are gonna keep, which gonna are gonna erase and delete, and then we're gonna finalize with smaller details and smaller elements to it. But now we're keeping the general shape, base lines, main lines, and we'll go from there. So watch and learn. And if I'll be you, I'll probably write some tips down somewhere because I'm pretty sure you're gonna forget in like two minutes. Originally, I wanted to draw where the whole tongue fits basically onto her side, but I, I think it's not gonna look good in it. So I, I think I need to scrub the whole thing and go back to where the head only fits only so small. And I can at least get like the body end and curve about here at this stage. And I need to erase all this. And, and this is the reason I'm always saying don't get way too much in detail because not always everything goes on like you planned before and 
sometimes you have to like scrap hole and start again and that's exactly what we're gonna do now we're gonna scrap this and i'm gonna uh, try to get like the head starts here and finishes about there and then it starts to curve about there so I you can kind of remember how it looked like the head the body tail goes and spins and starts about there yeah so we're gonna delete this and start brand new again first stage we need to find the size of the head once we find the size of the head then we can approximately know how big the body needs to go once I find the body lines then we do the same thing what we did with the leopard. We only do the main lines, the main sketchy lines, nothing too much in detail, just plain basic body lines. Then I wrap around the head, just so it overlaps each other, it interrupts with each other and it doesn't look boring and it, it looks like a one big cohesive piece. I still don't like this end here. Well, not the end, more the start. I don't like how she stands and then like goes up the what I'm thinking is I need to twist probably that way and then it comes back. Even if you draw one line, it still needs to make common sense. And as long as you have that, you'll be fine. But now she doesn't stand naturally. So we need to redo all the bottom and then start again. I do like this better. I think I'm, I'm not like a thousand percent happy, but I think it looks better. And for the time's sake, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to link blink eyes, well, blank eyes, make them white. And then we're gonna make smoke out of it. Now you probably understand why I didn't, didn't finish the area what I wanted to do on him because, well, we are rubbing half of it out. It doesn't need to be there anymore. The snake is taking over the space. I and mean, you probably didn't, didn't know I was gonna put the snake, but even if you put the snake on it, it doesn't mean you only need to sketch half of the face. For the whole face to make sense, you need to sketch the whole thing and only then you can draw stuff on it and then rub off later but otherwise if you're only gonna draw half of the face it's gonna be really hard to match or balance out the areas and you're gonna not gonna understand what's wrong what's missing what's what why it doesn't look as good as it does but you need to draw the whole thing and then you can rub out the areas you don't need don't draw only only a portion and then it's gonna seem incomplete or imbalanced or you're not gonna understand what is going on, why it doesn't look right, but it won't look right. And yeah. So here we are, with that far, probably, this is the moment where we can make some fun. We can create some stuff, we can add some stuff, we can take off some stuff, we can cut some some things on half and add little details. And, and now this is the finalizing moment where you can actually add stuff to it now these two make sense they look all right i kind of curved tried to curve a little bit of tongue so it looks like it's licking his head and at the same time snake is wrapping around all his face showing who's the boss in the house and then the guy we need to get all the little details on the face here 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 all that you need to kind of follow the reference what you got but remember that is just a reference you can still make your own and add elements on top of it, whatever you want to add. So don't be like prisoned by the reference photo. You got totally freedom, you're an artist, go for it. But now at this stage, I'm gonna finalize him a little bit more. It will tell me, my brain, that it's leopard I'm looking at now, it's just a cat, could be panther, could be any unfinished tiger maybe, but we're gonna do the black spots and I'll be more happy with, with what I see myself. And then we're gonna finalize the little details. From all the drawing elements, this is literally my favorite part where I can finalize a little bit more what the main sketch looks like. Now we can add the little details, now we can add the little things, little shadows, little whiskers, as you can see, I'm adding an added few be behind the snake because even if the snake covers the face, there will be some whiskers pushed right behind it. Then I decided to add some smoking eyes just to make it look more evil and more cool. And this is a stage where we are allowed to add smaller details, which we're gonna align later on. But now we need to find where they're gonna sit, how they're gonna look like, how big they're gonna be, where they are. We need to find the flow in the hair. And I bet you, get, you expected me to say something really quick, fast, and that the whole design is gonna take you about two minutes max. And you don't really want to spend too much time thinking about evolving. You're probably
probably open this video because you thought it's gonna be a two minute job but i'm about one and a half two hours in as far as you literally just watched me now so if you want an easy design one and a half hours cool if you want a cool design well it'll take some time so imagine all these designs what i've done before if you watch my channel they take ages forever a long time and that's why they look good so if you want to do a really really good art you have to sacrifice some hours you can't build a house in one day you can't even get a decent foundation in one day it just has to take some time to prepare so the house can look nice and your sketch is your preparation for the design to look nice if the sketch looks bad so the design so it is what it is you gotta do some hours and let me explain you something real quick and what I quickly say is, see how this is in line work? Some people would take a, a liner or a pencil marker and they would draw one clean line literally over this area. And that's how you get a clean neo traditional tattoo. You literally take the areas you just mark with a pencil, like this one here, you literally just take with a liner or with a marker or pencil wherever you draw a tattoo. You make a clean line and so it is. Or you make a clean line, pull around this one, and so it is. So that's how Neo Traditional is literally doable on this kind of design where you mark out the areas you need, you take one liner, make a clean, crisp line. On the first, it's gonna look weird. By the time you finish, you look awesome. And that's how you get a clean Neo Traditional. Whereas me, I like to mix some styles and I like to make my lines little crisscross, uh, criss wiggly, sketchy, like this. Do, 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 do up and down, up and down, up and down, like little waves and that. So that's how you literally draw hair like this. You go up and down, you follow the line and you just go up and down, up and down and and so it is. And it becomes that kind of neo-traditional, which is a, a certain bit more different than the standard one. The standard one would take one clean line over here and done. I'll perhaps gonna add some little flicks like that, which is gonna make you look more hairy. And it's all it is, it's literally a little triangles on top of that, on the, the main line. And that's it. That's how you get like hairy animals or hairy neo-traditional or whatever. And same we're gonna do inside here, which is his ear. And we're just gonna do that and down and that and down. And that's how you do pretty much hair. He doesn't have a clean sh starting point. But it, it starts, makes the end darker and comes back. And that's pretty much how you do um, fair, I don't know, anything. Human hair, women's hair, animals hair, fair, anything and what goes into that kind of shape. You just up and down, up and down. And as you do a lot of them, it starts to fill up the space and it starts to look hairy. But where it is, it's literally lying there and back and there and back and then you do a lot of it next to it make sure they don't all go in the same order or same pattern in a sense they have to overlay each other and have to some go behind and fill up some weird areas so it looks naturally destroyed and whipped and and messy but at the same time it's clean so that's how you get all that so i'm one of those people who like more details, so I'm gonna probably gonna add a lot of little uh, bumps, dumps. I don't know. Basically, it has some black spots in here, and I'm gonna replicate them as close as I can, but keep keeping the same neo thread style. And that's how I get my style. I just do a little bit extra. Imagine this is a clean line, and on the design, that's the area what separates something white from something orange. And I'm literally gonna create like a little hair feeling to it, which still creates that line, which we need a separation from one color to another. In this bump, we have a black mark, so you can kind of sketch it and then wiggle it and it becomes a little dirty, messy, but you can see what shape it creates and what line it needs to be. Same like here, we have another one there. You cover that in and that's pretty much that and there's no right or wrong it's just a hair and one hair here one hair there it doesn't make any difference because 
by the time animal, I don't know, wakes up and goes to sleep, all these whiskers and all the hair and all that is, it's different, you know, it, it's, it was, as this photo, it was only once in life when it's in this photo. And by the time he washed himself and then all these whiskers and here, uh, basically all the hair gets like pushed in a different direction and then he wakes up and does again and it becomes a bit different direction and different. He doesn't matter what direction, as long as it looks what it looks, it's good. Because when you follow the reference photo, it was like that on that specific moment and it can be different like anyway. I can make these downwards you know, if I wanna, and it won't look alright. Because why not? Why they can't be downwards? Because there was probably a time when he was wet, maybe came out of like, I don't know, puddle, water, and alligator chased him, and he was tired, and and he did just get smudged and budged and, and dirty and messy and not clean, and, and, and before you know it, voila. You have some sort of feeling it moves it's it's natural so so i just want to say that two options one you make a clean line out of whatever you do second you add these extra lines and then even then when you line you pick the one the main one and you carry that and the middle line just becomes your whip shading lighter lines what you do is you pick a solid black i don't want to make it too dark because i will need to erase but you will need to make it like these will be solid black lines with a black ink. Yeah, use black ink to make outer lines. Then you wash that out, you dip into shading ink. And now you have a lighter lines. And even if you try your best, you'll heal lighter because it's a shading ink. And then you pull in these middle lines and they will heal that way because they are done in a lighter way. If you ever see pull of a light, a whiter, lighter, faded line that is done with the shading ink on purpose so it would heal light you probably sometime in life try to pull the same emotion with your black ink which you still pull these lines and then you thought ah, oh, you know what i'm gonna do these little lines in the middle as well but they healed not as light so it didn't look as cool but once you pull black line which i'm really tempting to do but i will need to erase this on the side you pull these black ones there and then you get the light, light ones in, in the middle. But these are always darker. Pull with the black ink, shading ink. Yeah? So that's trick of the trade. It took me a couple bit time to learn that, but I've learned that. Black ink, wash out, clean needle, and shading ink in the middle. Yeah? So now, let's carry on on uh, this guy. I'm going to finish him. As you can see, we still got a lot of work ahead of us. We still need to find where the black spot's going to be, where the hair's going to grow, which direction they're going to grow. But as I'm working, I'm looking at reference photo right next to me and kind of following that, but at the same time, I'm not. I'm creating still my own. And there were a few elements right next to the snake, which I literally just did, which wasn't in a reference photo, but I wanted to add there. So it separates more the flapper from the snake and giving some black behind it, it tells the eyes the snake is above the snake and there's something behind and i often get bored if i spend too much time in one area so i jump from one area to another area to give some kind of destruction for myself if i'm i feel i'm stuck into as black spots i'll go somewhere else and then if i feel like i'm stuck in the snake scales i'll go somewhere else and even if I'm jumping from one area to another area, there's still movement. I'm still doing other stuff. So I'm moving forward, but I'm entertaining myself at the same time. So then I've decided to add these little leaves. Just if anyone ever decides to copy this design, it'll be a little bit harder for him. That's that. And then I'm just thinking now, like, what's the difference between drawing anything else and animals? I don't see none. Same as you would sketch my hand, if I would position this, you would need to find where the fingers sit before you line them. Same, you try to sketch where the nose is before you line it, or where the eye is before you line it, or where the ear is and it's been built, so you would know where to line it. Like, I, I physically don't know any difference between a snake, a da, or a lion, tiger, animal, hand, fingers, 
pencil this goes on like you have to do exactly the same steps to every single little bit and that's that like you just saw me going from zero to hundred so you can't say on ipod is easy on ipod you can trace on paper you can draw it's, it's the same thing same element same line thicknesses size composition every fundamental rituals goes the same into here so what we're gonna do now at this moment is we're gonna drop that leave that for a bit we're gonna grab our my special case with all sorts of gadgets inside who have liquids inside and then we're gonna liquid all this with different size of lines so i'm gonna use probably a fat one a mid and small one now sometimes i still make mid session decisions and i'm like you know what it's not gonna be that way i'll make it a bit different and i do so these are the numbers i'm gonna use 0 0.8 0 0.2 and this little guy i mostly start with the eights so i get the big lines out of the way doing the big ones first as you can see gives a clear image what i'm looking where it's gonna be and as it goes the detailed ones are the left ones last minute ones I'll, I'll do that later but the first is the big areas the ones who's looking at me the ones who need to stand out and then I've, i just want to entertain myself and i go a little bit there a little bit there with smaller details but i mostly do the big ones first and it's really really important to do really really clean lines when you draw on the paper or an ipad or whatever but as as much as you need you can do you need to tell yourself to go clean and clean and clean and perfect so it looks like it's been done on the ipad it's been printed out and naturally your habits gonna build up and you will always be able to draw clean because that's what you've been always doing and you're telling yourself as you can see i'm drawing now with the 0 0.2 all the little details the little hair adding smaller flicks and sticks there which wasn't even there but i did them extra and now what i'm doing now doing the scales and it the scales are really important they need to be extremely clean they need to follow one direction from the head to down and you cannot flip the scales all the way around the mid design you you need to keep in mind the flow of the scales and now at this moment i thought to myself what should i do should i go with the standard scales or a bit different ones and then i came up to this conclusion that i'm gonna go this way i feel like what i'm doing now is gonna take me forever but it's one of the effects or defects or the ways to do what i've always wanted to try i've seen other people doing it. i never thought how they do it till this moment i kind of wanted to go easy way out to go lazy way and skip all the hard part but then i thought mm, you know i'm gonna spend at least once in my lifetime to do it and to see if i want to repeat that in the future or not but now i'm doing it on a paper so i'm not doing actually down on a skin but it does look cool i want to see how it looks like when i delete the pencil lines but but first i need to align them all which is going to take me like forever so I can imagine how that would feel like on the skin when you do there with line after line after line. You need a day session almost at least for the for these kind of lines itself. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that in the future, but I really want to see how it looks like now, and then you're gonna judge from there. So let's do more lines, I'll say. And the scales are really, really important. One, they are perfectly the same in a way. Second. You need to flow with the scales. You can't just make it straight down. They need to curve as the curves go. They need to bend as the bend goes and they need to look perspectively correct. Second or third this is, you are using really, really thin liner or thin needle, which means if you make a smallest mistake, you can clearly see. It never happens with a bigger needle. If you make a tiniest mistake on the bigger needles, you can't really see, even if you use a tool or a draw. But once you touch these little fine liners, they're extremely precise. And if you make a smallest one millimeter mistake, you're going to see from miles away. Right now, we only got this middle one left. But to be honest, I feel like my finger's going to fall off the backwards. Oh man, you can see like I have a bend. Can you see? It's literally like bent inwards. It looks kind of creepy, you know.
I don't know how you, a lot of people hold it this way, I can't. And same, I, I don't tattoo this way. I drop on my second finger. So what I do is, my little finger is my balance, and this, I can uh, shade and whip or whatever. So this is my movement, my little finger is my balancer. And I guess when I draw, I just draw naturally that way as I hold a tool machine. I, I can't, it just feels weird this way. And I don't know, this is my go-to. But anyways, my fingers are barely holding together. <laughs> it looks crazy, and I can see a bend. I can maybe, maybe I can even balance a pencil. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? It literally sits in that bent dump. I don't know what's the word. Anyways, we need to get the middle one here. I kind of forget like to do that every day, but I feel like I'm not gonna do because just don't wanna. And then once we get this one out, I'm really like, I can kind of see what the pattern looks like without when the pencil will be off, but I really wanna rub the pencil off to see what really the pattern looks like and how it looks when it's clean. Nice. I'm probably gonna run, rub the whole pencil drawing off, and then we're gonna see where we are. So let's do the middle one, the last one. We are coming to the end, and at this point, I was losing patience, but I still had to make every line perfect. And I was kept telling myself, just keep it going, keep going, and make every line perfect. I was a long hour in. It took me longer than I thought, but now. Oh, the finish line is there. I can see a few more and it's done. I'm probably going to call a day today and I think for the line work, it should be fine. I'm drawing to the level where I can run this through a stencil machine and I can actually tattoo someone off this as it is. So I'm not going to shade anything like that yet. Maybe I'm going to change my mind in the future, but as far as it goes, it will stay in the line work only. So I'm going to finish that and I rub my pencil lines off and then we'll go from there. I didn't film how I rub off the pencil lines because I thought it's unnecessary. But when you watch the next video, it will be the video where there's no pencil lines anymore. So here it is. All the lines are done. The only issue is now I can see the snake more than the leopard itself. That's an issue. But when that would need to be shaded quite dark, quite black. So that stands out and the snake may be a little bit lighter. So it, now at this moment, it does overpower. You see snake and the leopard becomes like a decoration to it rather than being one of the main pieces. Then the pattern itself actually looks quite cool. I've seen when people dot work this, so it makes the, these little, I don't even know what the shape they are called, but rums, you know, diamonds, circular diamonds. One of them, anyways, they are dot worked in, so they only leave like the outer lines, those long, long, long lines, white, and the little ones become shaded in. That looks pretty cool. I've seen people doing that, so that inspired me to like try myself to see how it goes. And uh, I bet there's been times when you watch my videos and you think, ah, oh, this guy's using iPad and it makes life easier, it's so clean an iPad, and these gadgets help you, but you can see. I can pull the same lines on the paper, can you? So this guy took me about two to three hours to draw. It took me some time. It's it's one of them if you want a good design, if you have to put in hours, if you want a shitty design, you do it quick. But the quick ones goes in cover up. Some people like me, we will cover them. It is what it is. People like something, then they see something better, but that little one's in the way, we cover them. It always goes that way, and I got a few cover-ups booked in the future as well, which are gonna cover someone else's work. It is what it is. I will probably take photo for this one, so I can print out to make a stencil any size I want and I need, so I have a backup, which means what I want you two guys do is give me... I got two options, basically. We can finish it in black and grey, or we can finish in colour, which... Some of you might prefer, maybe some of you want to see black and grey or mix where one is done black and grey, one is done in colour, maybe negative. I don't know. Leave me any suggestions down below so I can see what you guys thinking and 
I'm gonna pick one and we're gonna roll in. I'm probably gonna pick the one which gets the most votes. So whatever you decide, I'll go for it. It's down to you guys. It's for you to watch, learn, study. And I'm pretty sure you, you must have picked something up from this video which gave you new knowledge, new inspiration. Or maybe even a little hint into something how you have never heard before. So I'm really happy to, to let you design I can't speak after all these hours. I'm happy for you to decide which way we're gonna go and I'll go that way. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and I'm hoping it'll be one of your decision videos. See you soon guys.